So I've made a couple of videos before concerning the claims of young Earth creationists in human population. The basic claim is that, if the Earth is millions of years old, the human population should be a lot bigger than it is now. Since it's approaching 7 billion, we can, according to the creationists, extract this growth rate backwards and come up with a figure of 6 to 10,000 years, exactly when they say the Earth was created with just two people. But back when Jesus was here, there was about one quarter billion people on planet Earth. 250 million. It sure looks like from the population growth curve that the whole population today started about 4,400 years ago. Oh, and just in case... When I started this ministry 14 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm not going to copyright my stuff. None of my material is copyrighted. Feel free to copy it and spread it to others. Sorry to keep playing this part, but you never know what dishonest creationists will do. No, no DMCA violations in this video. You can get yourself a population of five or six billion in a few thousand years. Now, if you believe in evolution, you got a problem. Because you think man's been here for three million years. Wow. In three million years, the population would have grown. Right now, there would be 150,000 people per square inch. It should surprise no one that this doesn't work at all. But since creationists are still out there, and in the comments, bleeding on and showing their ignorance, I thought I'd take the time to show you a little more about how this really works. The equation here is P prime equals RP times 1 minus P over M, or the number of people in the next generation is equal to the current population times the growth rate. So, for example, if every couple has two children, that's a growth rate of 1, known as replacement fertility. With a growth rate of 1.5, every couple, on average, has three children. Except it doesn't really work that way. This would make the assumption that every single person would grow up to have children, and that just isn't the case, hence the rest of the equation. 1 minus the ratio between the current population and the overall population capacity. Remember how I pointed out that the creationists ignore this part? I looked at the growth of bacteria while ignoring all limits on what population could be sustained, just like the creationists do, and I had bacteria taking over the Earth in just a couple of years. This demonstrates how important this part of the equation is. As I pointed out before, you can't simply take the current rate and extrapolate backwards because our technology has made it so we can sustain a greater population than we could before. Population is limited by the available resources, but it gets a boost every now and then. At the start of the agricultural revolution about 10,000 years ago, farming gave a boost because food was more readily available, and innovations such as irrigation allowed more food to be planted in a certain area that couldn't be before. In the Industrial Revolution, innovations such as canning and refrigeration boosted this limit even higher. Additionally, modern medicine has made it so that people are living healthier and longer and not dying of diseases at anywhere near the rate we were before. All of this means that the variable n increases with our science and technology. However, for our purposes here, let's side with the creationists and ignore all that. Here is a spreadsheet I made to graph out what happens in a population over 100 generations with these values. We'll assume the carrying capacity of the entire planet is 10 billion people. We'll also assume that we start with a population of two, Adam and Eve. Now, those of us who have done even a modicum of research know that this wouldn't actually work as we wouldn't have enough of a gene pool to sustain a population. But again, we're being generous to the creationists here. It actually doesn't matter that much for our purposes anyway. As we shall see, it really depends on R, the growth rate. If we have a growth rate of 1, we have total replacement fertility. Although in this model it's unrealistic, since with just two people, one of them accidentally falling off a cliff or being eaten by a lion would result in extinction. This is something to keep in mind. This model does not account for accidents, natural disasters, environmental conditions, or anything else threatening to wipe out our feeble little population here. Remember this, it'll become important later on. So let's see if we can get some population growth going here. We'll increase the growth rate to 1.5, which means that, on average, every couple has three children. See how the graph changes? We start off with an exponential growth curve, just like what we'd expect, but then it tapers off at a plateau. This plateau is not the overall population capacity. We have that set at 10 billion, and here we've leveled off at around 3.3 billion. We've only reached a third of our potential. And look, we reached it in just 61 generations. If a generation is 20 years, that means that, only 1,220 years later, we've reached the limit of what we can sustain. But according to the creationist's own graphs, that's clearly not how it happened. Well, let's see if we can get that up to a higher value. Let's increase our growth rate to 2. Every couple now has, on average, 4 children. See the difference it made? 
We do have a bigger population now, 5 billion people, but we reached that plateau in only 36 generations. Again, assuming a generation time of 20 years, that's just 720 years. A higher growth rate means that we reach a higher plateau with a higher overall population, but we reach it more quickly. But if we lower the growth rate to make for a longer growth curve, we plateau at a lower amount and don't reach anywhere near the over 6 billion population we have today. We're only just beginning to see the problems here. If we assume this perfect model, even considering the limitations that we have put in that the creationists haven't, then even a creationist time period is too big for the population to be the size that it is and still be growing. Again, you have to take these other factors into consideration if you want to understand how the human population has grown over time, with a capacity much lower in primitive times growing larger and larger as human knowledge and technology increase. But guess what? We're not done yet! Let's increase the growth rate to 2.5. Now we're starting to see some weirdness here. Instead of reaching a plateau, we overshoot it. And it takes a few generations for the population to stabilize, this time at 6 billion people. Up into 3 and it gets even weirder. We don't hit a plateau at all. Now we're oscillating between two values as the population grows to about 6.9 billion, then drops to 6.3 billion, then back up and back down with no end in sight. At 3.5, things get even weirder. Now we end up oscillating between four different values. The population goes up to about 8.7 billion, then down to 3.8 billion, then up to 8.2 billion, then down to 5 billion, and starts all over again. The equation hasn't changed at all. The only thing we have changed is the growth rate. Increase it to 4, however, and it gets incredibly weird. We're not even oscillating any longer. We have chaotic growth that no longer follows any discernible pattern. It doesn't stabilize, it doesn't oscillate, and we can't even notice any repetition here. Our old friend chaos theory rears its ugly head. And if we increase the growth rate anymore, disaster. Even with a growth rate of 4.1, the chaos causes such wild population swings that the entire human race becomes extinct in only 29 generations. Just 580 years! And then there are no more people. Gone. Done. Extinct. We've gone the way of the dinosaur and the dodo. And remember, this is without modeling any natural disasters or anything. There hasn't been a drought, or a flood, or an asteroid strike, or anything of that nature. Just the very same equation we've been using all along. So we can clearly see that the chaos of the system depends entirely on the growth rate. Either the population is chaotic and unpredictable, or it stabilizes relatively quickly. The only way out of this, the only way to model the population even over the last 6,000 years is for the value of m to change over time. The fact that creationists refuse to do this is just one more example of how they have to ignore reality to support their pathetic delusions.